Hey folks, uh, so I've got a new lock uh, I'm going to try to pick for you here. This is the Stanley S828145. It's a 50 millimeter solid body padlock uh, with uh, shrouding. Uh, that's to protect the this very thick shackle from uh, cutting and shimming attempts. Since it doesn't cover the whole height of it, it's more effective against uh, shimming protection, which as you'll see uh, in a bit, actually, let me show you right now. As you can see, it also uses a ball bearing mechanism, so uh, that shimming protection isn't really necessary, but it does provide a certain amount of cut protection. Uh, it also has this very thick face plate with this spinning anti-drill plate, which is supposed to uh, help prevent you from drilling out the shear line if you're attempting a destructive entry. And these keys uh, are worth a little bit of a look. They look kind of funky at first glance, but really they are just modified versions of the SC4, uh, the standard six-pin Schlage blank. Uh, it's just that this little notch has been cut away where there would normally be this extra uh, tab here, and that's to fit past that very thick face plate and anti-drill plate. So, Let's, uh, this thing is rekeyable, so let's see if we can get it open, and I will dump the pins and we'll take a look at what's in there. So, we're going to use the uh, thick Peterson pry bar, with the, and we're going to use the long tip in there to reach past that uh, thick faceplate, and we're going to use the uh, standard uh, thickness Peterson uh, short hook. I'm going to reach in there and start feeling around, make sure we're not getting hung up on the warding. So that anti-drill plate can complicate things a little bit sometimes. So, not feeling much. Okay, I think that was number three, number four, five, six. And, hmm. Okay, number two. Four. Let's get back and see if we've got any. Okay, a little bit of movement on number one. Okay, number two is finally set properly. Uh, number four. I think that's set now. Five, number six. Okay, number three gave us a little bit of movement. Number two gave us a little bit more movement. Now, this thing definitely has spools because we're in a little bit of a false set. Um, okay, still feeling around. I'm going to have to lighten up on my tension a little bit, I think, because I'm getting some counter rotation on a couple of these pins. I don't want to push too hard. So let's see, really at this point we are very close and I'm just going around tapping each pin very gently, very gently just trying to see if we can get any sort of movement to get it past uh, that false set because I'm pretty sure there are a fair number of spools in this thing. So. Dropping around, up and down. And there we go. Looks like it was number two or number three. That was holding us up there. So now I've got it open. Well, great, we've got it open, but uh, how do we get that uh, cylinder out? I mean, if we look down there. There we go. If you look down there, there's no or anything. So how do we get this out? This isn't like uh, those Abus or uh, uh, Schlage padlocks we've seen before. Well, the first thing we have to do is take a 3mm metric uh, hex wrench. Oh, that's a little bit too large. It's a 2.5. 
Okay, let's try 2.5. There we go. And we're going to remove this little hex screw that's sticking out of the side here. I'm going to hold the uh, shackle in. One moment. Let's get that out there. And let's try unlocking it again. Come on. There we go. So we've got the shackle out. There we go. Come on. This uh, spring doesn't want to come out, but there we go. Got the spring out. Now, if you look down that side, you'll notice we've got another hex screw in there. Let's see. That. No, 2.5 is a little bit too thick. Put that back, and we'll get the 2 millimeter. Let's wrench out. Reach in there. And just about got it. There we go. And now, as I do this, you'll see that retaining screw and the faceplate drop out. And there's the screw and everything. There we go. And now, oh, and there's a little... Uh, collar to keep the screw from accidentally backing out. So, there you go. It's uh, pretty similar to the actuator on an American lock on the inside, but um, there's not going to be a bypass for it, because if you look here, this, uh, this cam covers up the entire uh, keyway. So, no bypass there, but let's see uh, what we can do here. Uh, now is my, no, my fancy little uh, cap remover is not going to work here. So we have to do this the old-fashioned way. There we go. So there's the uh, actuator. And we're just going to drop a pin and spring out. And now we are going to need the key. I mean, we don't need the key, but it's a lot easier this way. And let's do this with a follower. Okay, there we go. So. Uh, pin number six, pin number five, so far all pretty standard, look like they might be nickel plated but nothing super special about that, there we go, and now let's see what is in the Bible, uh, so Pin one, with spring, pin two, with spring, pin three, with its spring, four, with its spring, five, with its spring, and six, with its spring. Oh wow, so these are some pretty unusual things. See if we can get in here nice and close. There we go. So you can see this guy is basically a double spool. And we've got a standard, a standard, a standard. And this one just has the tips milled away slightly uh, so that it narrows a little bit at each end. And then we have 
very narrow uh, spool right here. So, frankly, I've got to say, this is uh, some pretty impressive work. These, uh, these, I'm kind of, I'm kind of torn as to whether these are true spools or just some very aggressive serrations, but either way, the workmanship is quite impressive, and uh, if you notice, we're dealing with two different types of springs here, so we even get some varied tension. Now keep in mind, I have never opened this lock cylinder before. This is all factory original work. So I have to say, I'm just from the get-go, I'm pretty impressed by this. Uh, so, you know, you can buy one of these locks for about $25 or so on Amazon. And uh, for $25, that's a, that's a pretty, that's a pretty solid lock. I mean, it's a good, sturdy uh, body, feels like steel. The pins and uh, everything are very smooth, very well done. There's no obvious bypasses. You've got the uh, ball bearing, locking cam. Uh, this anti-drill plate is pretty impressive. Overall, for $25, that's one heck of a lock. So, uh... You know, maybe uh, consider that the next time you need uh, a, a good padlock for something. For $25, it's hard to beat. And you can always uh, uh, modify it to take your own, uh, your own high-security uh, cylinders as long as they're compatible with a Schlage key and knob system. So, uh, until next time, have fun and happy picking.